to be honest, we were actually contemplating whether we wanted to keep the baby or not. So he actually made me this like, I think 8 to 10 pages long PDF just to convince me that everything will work out. Like they're just so perfect when they're young and then they hit primary school and they're so annoying. <laughs> I think with the fifth one, it will just be like kind of overkill. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to take in when you find out you're pregnant. The emotions run wild. Joy, shock, uncertainty. Having a child means that your lives will no longer be the same. Ashraf and Esther, as well as Jonathan and Chantel, recently learned they are expecting. Today, they're making plans for their children and realizing that there are actually a lot of things to think about. Yeah, we married close to a year. We married last year on uh, 11 December 2021. But we've been dating since uh, July 2016. 18 July 2016, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we've been married nine years? Nine years, yeah. <laughs> Currently, we, we have four kids with um, one in the stomach on the way. It's like a mix of both planned and unplanned because we plan to have kids but not like now now because it's just <laughs> one year in the marriage. She always tells me her dream job is to be a mum which kind of a yeah, self-fulfilling prophecy I think. <laughs> so so we, we didn't actually plan for kids ironically but I knew from the start she was a kid person. Hearing from friends or even we went for courses saying that uh, the kid in the first few months we actually wake up a lot of time, every three hours need to feed. So of course, honestly, I don't think I am ready. La, but at the end of the day, I tell myself, say that at the end of the day, I just try to perform my best. I feel I was 100% ready. Like I was always ready, I was born ready. <laughs> That's <laughs> <your> good. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me it was, no matter how old you are, I think when the kid comes, then you learn to deal with life and then you get more mature. So you will never be ever ready. La. So that was my initial fear also. But then after I think about it, I was like, yeah, you don't grow up until life happens to you. The financial realities of raising a child also tend to hit home during pregnancy. Not only do parents-to-be need to consider the immediate medical and material costs, they also have to consider how they will be providing for the child for at least two decades. I would think so. Uh, firstly, you know, we have um, tuition, which is um, very expensive for per subject. And then, of course, you don't want uh, your kids to, to, to get left behind in school. If you're looking at things like wanting to give your child, let's say, piano lessons and things like that, then yes, that, that is expensive. No <laughs> Because as the age goes up, they will actually need small enrichment class. Expensive in Singapore. Because like everything for me, the milk, the diaper, is very expensive. Um, I guess my main concern would be finances because actually I'm, uh, I would say, because I just entered the workforce like three years ago, I thought that maybe um, our finance should be in a more um, stable stage before we actually have a kid. Yeah, so um, and then after that, it came like all the other secondary concerns like who's going to take out the baby because we are both working. He managed to convince me la, that we can actually do it together. It's not like a one-man show. But to be honest, it's not that expensive at the start. So I think it kind of got really expensive with the kids growing up and then wanting to give them the best experience in all the classes, the tuitions, the sports that you want to do. Those are really expensive. Being a parent often involves making personal sacrifices. First-time parents Ashraf and Esther have become more aware of this going into this pregnancy. Uh, when we had the first three babies, we were all we did we had them all at a private hospital and then after we had our experience at the government hospital we actually like all the service and the doctors and everything like were really great at the government hospital so we we're just gonna have the fifth child there so actually i think that actually saves a lot of money from zero to 18 it can cost as much as uh, hold on to your seat uh, around 150 to 200 thousand dollars <laughs> it's crazy the pregnancy alone can cost five figures no, I've done my research before, tertiary costs as much as preschool. So it's only in the middle part, primary school and secondary school that you save a little bit of money. And a lot of people like to send for tuition. Tuition is easily $80 to $100 per hour. So I will always advise parents to plan just nice. A lot of people overspend and therefore they find it stressful to raise a child. You can actually spend only $5 per meal, why spend $20? Uh, there is the spending part 
and the saving part. So let me divide into two. Nowadays, there's a lot of sharing websites. You can easily Google and you can find people willing to pass uh, hand-me-downs. No, no, no harm just reaching out to your friends or colleagues and say, hey, you know, I got a child who's a girl, you know, don't mind, can pass me something. And then there is the saving part. A lot of people save by just putting it into like fixed deposit. Interest rate is so high, but it's still not as high as inflation rate. Right? So the moment you put money only in your bank, whatever bank you choose, is always going to depreciate, always. Learn to grow through very wise, uh, low-risk, high-yield strategies. With the discussion of finances, comes the next inevitable decision for the couple. What should the work arrangements be like? Should one or both parents work? We are also open to one of the parents staying at home. Uh, then one, the one staying at home uh, will do, can do some part-time. Uh, at the end of the day, really, it depends on um, why the parent is staying home, you see. If it's to spend quality time with the kid and all that, then yeah, no harm there. I mean, we do have parents who work 12 hours a day because they need to make ends meet, so the child is left alone. I stay home for 10 years. For me, it's very important because it's their foundational years. And I want to be there for them uh, and to like, you know, witness their milestones and all that and install, instill the right values. The minute you find out you're pregnant, your life changes, your body transforms, there are huge long-term decisions to be made, and your future has just received a lot more curveballs. However, by going through these peaks and valleys together with your partner, it can also be one of the most meaningful experiences of your life. Even with all the resources that I read and all the anecdotes that people tell me, I think that there is no way that one can really be prepared for like motherhood in general. For one thing, it's that um, everyone's experience is so different, like from the delivery all the way to your baby. So might as well just go in with like a clean slate, um, zero expectations and then just take it uh, each day as it comes. I've seen so many of my clients had conflicts due to parenting due to money. Uh, I, I find that most conflicts are caused by this uh, mindset of I am right, you are wrong. The, the moment we are willing to at least ask ourselves that eh, perhaps there is something I can learn from my spouse, then there is respect. Also, that is the foundation of everything. So I suggest that at least uh, if you say, eh, can I learn something about uh, the mindset of my spouse, you at least ask questions like, uh, okay, can you share with me the rationale of putting our child through uh, this preschool? Just listen intently and see whether there can be a third perspective that we can explore. Any advice I would give like parents or new parents to be, I would really just say try to enjoy the first like few months. If you can just try and like step back and just soak in like the newborn baby nurse, like it's really so fast and then before you know it, your baby's three months and then they're four months and then they start rolling, they start like babbling and then like you'll never get like that newborn period back. You know, the advice is don't be scared actually. The joy the kids bring you and the motivation they bring you is very hard to explain. That's why I can't explain myself that I think we, nobody should be scared of because everybody's like, oh, I'm scared to have kids. Probably the surface looks difficult but like it brings you a lot of intangible stuff. Like.